Uh, welcome to Days of Glory Shopworks. On uh, this episode, we're continuing our cheap 440 build, and we're going to check our cylinder heads for warpage. Not very exciting, but very important. So, to start with, um, I'm actually revideoing this <laughs> because uh, somebody didn't have his settings correct on his camera and didn't get any footage. So, Unfortunately, I was going to show you uh, checking cylinder head for warp pitch properly, as well as cutting down my valve seal uh, surfaces with that uh, Comcams cutter. But uh, I've already gone ahead. I thought I was videoing, so I cut them all down. They turned out great. I'm super happy and can't wait to uh, use the valve seals with the, with the system I got. So, having said that, I'm going to flip the head on its... Uh, well, upside down and I'm going to run you through the exact way that you need to check a cylinder head for warpage. Alright, I hope everybody can see that. Here's our deck service. I wiped it back down again. And I've got some feeler gauges here. I'm going to start with a one thou. That's my two and my six. I'm going to line these feeler gauges up right quick and from there we'll be able to just run through her. Um, when checking for warpage, you want to uh, be able to incrementally check. That's why you use feeler gauges. You don't need these long feeler gauges, but I like them because I can just drape them across the head, and there they are, you know. Um, so I've got six feeler gauges in total, and frankly, if I need to go any higher, I already know I'll need to machine the block so or the head surface so we're going to start with one and a half and just move up incrementally two three four five six thou if required all right so our tool we're using for checking is this it is a machine straight edge now this one does look a little bit battered but the important surface is good and you can get away with using something else if you wanted to use a uh like a level, if you had a brand new level that you knew was straight and good, you could get away with it for a general overall glance at it. You'll you'll not know for sure. Uh, a level or a straight cut piece of metal is not the same as a machined straight edge. Uh, don't let anybody tell you different. I've tried to use them and then I've gone back with a machined straight edge and I'll tell you there are differences. Now, like I said, if you're not worried about them and you're getting a general low amount of warpage then you know what you're pretty good uh, you can run that with whatever you want my spec is about five thou if I've got any more than five it's gonna need to be machined so we're gonna start with our one and a half thou and we move this on several planes I start in the middle going across all the combustion areas I move to the outer edge I check across all the head bolt mounts and then I move to the outer edge here and check again across my coolant ports and head bolts. From there you want to go diagonal across the block surface and again diagonal across the other side and that will give you an overall idea of what the level of this is. So I think I'm going to move you back just a little bit more so you can get an overall view. I hope so. And here we go. So, one and a half thou, as I drop it on the ground. One and a half thou. And let's go. We'll start here. Oh, I can, so I can move that. What I'll do then is, I'm not surprised I can put one and a half thou in. And it stops right at the edge here so this is our high spot and down here low low everywhere as it intersects that's low there's no drag at all again low and coming back this will be a high spot yep I can't get it in there okay so knowing that one and a half thou is no good we're gonna run right up to two thou same thing I can fit two thou in okay I was expecting at least two thou Running across, running across, running across. Yeah. Um, all right, we're gonna have to go bigger. 
and one at a time. We're not gonna just jump up a few thou and try to expect that we're gonna get any kind of regular amount. All right, three thou, I can kinda, I can actually feel a touch on it, but not enough to say that it's only three thou. If it was three thou, I'd still be happy. All right, moving on. I don't like keeping on going up, but we have to. We have to find the truth. Without knowing where it actually sits, we just don't know. So this is our four thou feeler gauge. I mean, no. I'll still say it's no better than the three thou. Oh, hello. So this guy, three thou had no drag, four thou has drag. So we're starting to get a high spot now. So essentially our head is only a little warped and then it dips. So having said that, we keep on trucking here. We're gonna go five thou. We need to find out how much it is. <laughs> and I can still fit a five thou in. So I can just catch it there, I, but it's so smooth. I wouldn't say that's five. I'd say that's bigger still. No catch and, oops. I can't get my six out of wind and if I hold it on top of it, it pulls. So we probably have, well, the fourth thou was dragging and then we're still at five thou and five thou. So I'm gonna run the six thou through them. Okay, I've got even drag for six thou, it's probably actually six and a half thou. Okay, the six will move, so I'm gonna say five and a half thou, six and a half thou, four thou. You can see we've got an inconsistency on our surface. So I'm gonna get these heads milled uh, 10 thou, and something to keep in mind, if you were to have to go more than 10 thou, you start messing with your intake mounting surface. The further down on the, on the engine block your cylinder head goes, it actually moves your intake surface closer to your intake manifold on a VA configuration. So rule of thumb, if you have to machine a 10 thou, you're safe because this is only a 5 thou closer deviation and your intake will compensate that. But if you go 20 thou, 30 thou, 40 thou, if you want to mill it for more compression, you name it, you have to take whatever amount you take here, you have to go by half that amount here and you have to do it on both heads to make a match or else you'll run into major issues trying to get your intake manifold to mount on. You won't be able to get it sealed properly and it'll be just a complete pain in the butt. So that's where we're leaving this video guys. Um, stay tuned. Next video we're going to start talking about uh, possibly porting our heads a little bit. Nothing crazy but just for more efficiency. So that's part seven, eight, one of those. We're going to keep on trucking with our cheap 440 build. And thanks for following. Really appreciate it.